the first gift. It's what I call the philosophic gift that black people have given America and the world. It's a philosophic gift that takes the form of Socratic questioning and interrogation. What it really means to take seriously line 38A of Plato's Apology, the unexamined life is not worth living. And we can hear Malcolm X in the background, the examined life is painful. What does it really mean to muster the courage to think critically for oneself at a cost? To be willing to pay a burden, being courageous to think critically. We here at Princeton put a premium on critical reflection, critical examination, beginning with self, and society, and the world. But this first gift of black folk has to do with courage, very much like that particular Athenian who walked around barefoot, pop belly, flat nose huge lips, large neck, serious about examining himself. In fact, that line in the Greek actually said the unexamined life is not a life for the human. We know our English word human derives from the Latin humando. I'll say more tomorrow about the connection to the 12th paragraph of Vico's great text, The New Science of 1744, and the ways in which Humondo was tied to generation of history, the way in which mortality has everything to do with generating agency. But this preoccupation with Humondo, which means an burial, burial in the earth, in the dirt, the humic, H-U-M-I-C, connected to the human, H-U-M-A-N. It's where our word humility also comes from. Being close to the earth, tied to the dirt. And this preoccupation, burial, earth, funk. Black folk have been willing to raise the most terrifying question in the midst of America's precious experiment in democracy, which is, what does it mean to be human? Especially when your humanity is radically called into question, given the vicious legacy of white supremacy, trying to convince the world that this particular slice of humanity is less beautiful, less intelligent, less moral. And here comes these folk saying, we're going to raise this frightening query to this civilization. We know that you're preoccupied with market activity. We know you're preoccupied with mobility. We know you understand yourself to be a land of liberty and freedom, but we have a fundamental question that people have asked down through the corridors of time. What does it really mean to be human, to be featherless, two-legged, linguistically conscious creatures born between urine and feces? And to know that our bodies will one day be the culinary delight of terrestrial worms. Who you're going to be in the meantime? How do you define yourself? Who are you really when you take off the mask? Who do you see when you look in the mirror and allow those who perceive you as you look in the mirror to tell you something about yourself, especially of those who are saying so are those who you are standing, those who upon whom next you stand. It's a very uncomfortable Socratic situation. It has everything to do with wrestling with death in its various forms. Of course, one could argue that there's a real sense in which America, understanding itself as a city on the hill, experiment that can solve any problem, 
has no constraint it cannot go beyond no limits can constrain it and we hear that every January in whatever you know State of the Union put forward be it Democrat or Republicans there's no problem we cannot solve because we are American see Professor Jeff Stout there is that right though Jeff we hear it every year and we say, oh, wait a minute, Du Bois raised the question, how does it feel to be a problem in African body in which it looks as if there's something here that remains difficult to come to terms with? And it's not just political. It has to do with mustering the courage to think critical about your relation to burial, to death and forms of death. And one of the fundamental gifts of black folk in the history of America is precisely that of raising that Socratic question of a love of wisdom that acknowledges it as a meditation on and preparation for death and keeps track of the forms of death in America's past and present. What do you mean, Brother West? Social death. American barbarity. American bestiality. American brutality called American slavery. 244 years hemispheric in, in terms of the first presence of the Africans, 1619 to 1863, but for the first 79 years in the experiment, in, in the experiment of American democracy, social death to invoke the category of that magisterial text of Orlando Patterson at the other institution hall. Slavery and social death. What does it mean for a people to be on intimate terms with forms of death, to be in close proximity with forms of death in a society that understands itself as a grand city on the hill, which in many ways is a death-dodging, death-ducking, death-denying civilization. It's what Henry James called a hotel civilization. One of the reasons why he left America and went to Britain. In the eyes of some critics, wrote his best novels. What is it? about these particular people, Henry James would say, they're full of tremendous energy, technological innovation, preoccupied with upward mobility, but there's a sense in which there's a hollowness there, there's a shallowness there because they don't want to come to terms with death and despair and dread. They view themselves like those in a hotel, preoccupied with comfort, convenience, contentment. The hotel is a place for what? The lights are always on. leave your hotel and it's dirty and come back as clean you don't know who cleaned you you don't know whether they're being treated with dignity about or not it's just about you it's about your contentment it's about your own enjoyment so somehow you think you can muddle through history and downplay the forms of death in your midst and of course the u.s constitution is a good candidate isn't it look at the grand democratic institution created by those towering found founding fathers and what do we see no mention of the word slave no mention of reference to the institution of slavery only an invoking of slave trade why because it's denial Joseph Ellis one of the American leading American historians said it's a conspiracy of silence is an interesting friction and tension no it's more than that it's hypocrisy it's mendacity 